My name is Harry Osteen. I have been in the theater business all of my life. And I would like to tell you the history of the motion picture theaters in Anderson from the very beginning. The first theater to open in Anderson was the Opera House in 1905. The first movie that was shown in, in the Opera House was actually not a movie. It was knives and forks and spoons being moved around on a table. Now this film was created by a magician in New Jersey, an American named George Mila. At this time, all movies were one reelers that ran from six to nine minutes long. Now the Opera House had been running for all several years, running stage plays, affordables, uh, stock companies, and anything on the stage mostly. So movies was second bill. The first full length movie to run at the Opera House was uh, the uh, Unwritten Law, a thrilling drama based on the Thaw White tragedy. This theater closed in 1914 when the Anderson Theater was built. The second theater to open in Anderson was the Palace Electric. It opened May the 3rd, 1907. Eugene Salem was the proprietor. The location of this theater was uh, 114 North Main Street. It had live entertainment, also moving pictures. Their first movie was The Triumph. In 1913, they dropped live entertainment and went to movies only. The pictures were one reelers from six to nine minutes each. So it took about five or six to make a program. They also dropped the name Palace and called it the Electric in 1913. Their slogan was, Mutual Movies Makes Time Fly. Five pictures for 10 cents. This theater closed in 1914. The third theater to open in Anderson was the Park Theater. It opened May the 6th, 1907. It was located in Buena Vista Park, just off of East River Street. On summer nights, movies were exhibited both inside and outside of the pavilion. Once more, they were free. The Anderson Traction Company financed the entertainment, getting his money back from the way of increased patronage from the streetcar. This theater closed January the 10th, 1911. The fourth theater to open in Anderson was the Adrome. It opened in 1909. The location was 210 North Main Street, where the Sullivan Building now stands. The Adrome was an early day version of the drive-ins. It had no roof. Patrons sat on wooden benches under the stars. When it rained, the movie was called off. It closed in 1909. The fifth theater to open in Anderson was the Knickerbocker. It opened March the 27th, 1911, in the first block of West Whitney Street. It opened with a vaudeville bill, Carwell and Putnam. Also, Jimmy Tucker, a comedian, and a complete change of motion pictures. Ms. Charles Spellman played the piano. W.N. Landers was the manager. Photo plays took, sec took second billing in this theater. It closed May the 20th, 1912. The sixth theater to open in Anderson was the Lyric. It opened July the 3rd, 1911, at 133 North Main Street, where the townhouse restaurant is now. 
At first, it was a movie theater, but later had some stage shows. It was opened by a Mr. Wilson. It closed May the 20th, 1930. The seventh theater to open in Anderson was the Bijou. It opened March the 17th, 1913 at 214 South Main Street. This is where Gene Anderson once had a department store. This theater opened with the model, the interrogation, also a three, three reels of high class pictures. This theater was managed jointly by Philip Sassine and Bill Tindall. It burned in 1920. The eighth theater to open in Anderson was the Hudnell. In 1913, at 404 South Main Street. This is across the street from the City Hall. It closed in 1916. Now that's all I could find out about that theater. The ninth theater to open in Anderson was the Palmetto. It opened April the 7th, 1914 at 133 North Main Street by a Mr. A.M. Pinkster. This is where the Lyric Theater closed. In 1918, Mr. Pinkston sold this theater to P.C. Osteen Sr. The 10th theater to open in Anderson was the Garrick. It opened February the 15th, 1915. I could not find out where it was located, but I do know it was short-lived. Their, their opening program was Smothering Fires, a two-reel drama starring Warren Cargan. Also, Press His Soup, starring King Bargett. The third picture was Cheap Transportation, a foolish comedy that will make you laugh. This theater closed September 1950. The 11th theater to open in Anderson was the Anderson Theater, also called the Anderson Opera House. It opened on Tuesday, March the 23rd, 1915. The location was 204 West Whitner Street. It opened with a movie called The Champion, starring Charlie Chaplin. A two-reel two ethnic comedy this theater ran movies, but was better known for vaudeville and other stage productions. A Mr. Trowbridge was the manager. They closed in 1924. The 12th theater to open in Anderson was the Paramount. It opened March the 28th, 1950. Located on South Main Street, occupying half of the Crest Building. It was established by a stock company interested in bringing good movies to Addison. It stayed open long enough to show a serial entitled Perils of Pauline, featuring Earl White. It closed in 1915. The 13th theater to open in Addison was the Liberty, located at 133 North Main Street. It opened November 11, 1918, with the movie Crashing Through to Berlin. P.C. Osteen Manager. This theater was sold to a Mr. Drake in 1920. The 14th theater to open in Anderson was The Strand, located at 126 North Main Street. Built by P.C. Osteen Senior Manager, Jack Thrape, Dr. J.P. Trowbridge in 1920. Sold to Paramount Publix in 1925. It closed December the 31st, 1945. The first talking picture in Anderson was shown at the Strand, February the 11th, 1929, by the name of Lion and the Mouse, a Warner Brother production. When the, when the first talking picture was shown, the theater was owned by Paramount Publix. The 15th theater to open in Anderson was the Victor Theater.
located at 113 West Church Street. It opened in 1920 and closed in 1923. Now that's all that I could find out about this theater. The 16th theater to open in Anderson was the Imperial. It opened in 1921 at 214 South Main Street. This is the old Bijou location. This was really a fine theater, complete with a large balcony and a first class pipe organ. But it collided head on with the first depression and eventually closed December, the 20, December 1928. The 17th theater to open in Anderson was the garden. The old Anderson Theater location at 204 West Whitner Street. It opened July the 19th, 1924 with A.M. Pinkston manager. His favorite entertainment was vaudeville and stage shows. So he opened with the Dixie Darling starring Sweet Papa Bozo. His slogan was, Pinkston always has something worthwhile for your amusement. Later, he added movies, but closed on February the 20th, 1931. The theater was used then for American Legion minstrels, American Legion rallies, World War veterans, cooking schools, and other civic functions. The 18th theater to open in Anderson was the Egyptian, located at 133 North Main Street. It opened March the 10th, 1926. The Egyptian's first talking picture was Street Girl, November the 10th, 1929. P.C. Osteen Sr. was the manager. It closed July, 1932. Now, I have to back up a little and tell you the story of this little theater. It had four owners and four different names. Same location. It started from the beginning. To start from the beginning, it was opened July the 3rd, 1911, as the Lyric Theater. Uh, 133 North Main Street, as I said, where the townhouse is now located. A Mr. Wilson, by Mr. Wilson, it closed May the 20th, 1913. It was reopened by A.M. Pinkston, changing the name to the Palmetto, and opened April the 7th, 1914 ran by Mr. Pinkston till 1918. He sold it to P.C. Osteen Sr. Mr. Osteen renovated the, the, the theater, changed the name to the Liberty, and opened up on Armistice Day, November the 11th, 1918. Mr. Osteen then sold the Liberty to a Mr. Drake in 1920. Mr. Drake ran it as the Liberty until 1923 and closed. In the, in the meantime, Mr. Osteen, Jack Thrape, and Mr. J.P. J. J. Trowbridge established uh, the Strand. Uh, and in 1925, sold to Paramount Public a chain. But Mr. Pinkston had reopened the Liberty Theater July the 28th, 1924. Now, at that time, Mr. Pinkston was operating both the Garden Theater and the Liberty Theater. Mr. Osteen, being without a theater, buys the Liberty back from Mr. Pinkston and opened July the 27th, 1925. Changed the name to the new Liberty Theater. But on March the 10th, 1926, he made many improvements and changed the name again to the Egyptian. It ran as the Egyptian until July 1932 and closed. The 19th theater to open in Anderson was the pastime. It was located at 129 Queen Street. It opened in 1927. I know very little about this theater, although I did visit the, the booth, that's the operating room, a couple of times. Now I do know that this theater did not ever run a talking picture and they ran Western pictures uh, most all the time. This theater closed uh, 
in 1930. The 20th theater to open in Anderson was the Criterion. It was located at 204 West Whitner Street, the site of the old Garden Theater. They had their grand opening Friday, May 29, 1931, at 1 p.m. with their horror show, Dracula. Ten cents to everybody with modern sound equipment. Their slogan was, we bring the big ones back. There was a contest to select the name of this theater. The winners were as follows. L.A. Bramham, J.A. Pruitt, Clarence E. Gray, Sarah Rankin, J.C. Burton, J.C. Jones, J.B. Tidwell, Caroline Giggle, W.G. Matthews, T.A. Young, and Mary Bar Prince. The criterion was later managed by Wendell Patterson, and from 1933 to the closing, to the closing, Harold Burris was one of the projectionists and and uh, was the was the front builder. Now the front builder is the person that that builds all of this scene right in front of the theater, like the jungles and whatever uh, the picture represents. They would have a vulnerable uh, Hollywood star about every week. It closed its six-day running October the 31st, 1960, but ran two days a week, Friday and Saturday, for about another two years. The 21st theater to open in Anderson was the Ritz. It was located at 114 East Church Street. It opened in 1931, and this theater closed in 1941, and that's all I could learn about the Ritz. The 22nd theater to open in Anderson was the Carolina. It was located at 201 North Main Street, where the first federal savings and loan now stands. The opening date was June 15, 1932, with The Crowd Rowers, starring James Cagney and Joan Blondell. The Carolina ran vaudevilles and other stage shows, and lots of cowboy stars in person. D.C. Osteen, manager and owner, it closed April 7, 1957. The 23rd theater to open in Anderson was the State. Their grand opening was at 2.30 p.m. February the 20th, 1939, with the movie St. Louis Blues, starring Dorothy Moore. It was located at 131 East Whitner Street. The Anderson Community Theater is now in this location. It also had vulnerable ta and tap shows and Hollywood stars on their stage. Jimmy Cottonage was the first manager. It closed September the 10th, 1972. The 24th theater to open in Anderson was the center. It was located at 126 North Main Street. This is the same location that the Strand Theater closed. Their opening was Monday, August the 26th, 1946 with the movie Meet Me on Broadway. The center was a movie theater, no stage shows. Albert Mud Osteen was the manager. It closed December the 30th, 1955. The 25th theater to open in Anderson was the first drive-in, the Skyway, located on the Clemson Highway. It was a movie theater. It had no stage. They ran mostly second-run movies. Their opening feature was George White Scandals with Joan Davis. Bill Osteen was the first manager, and later Albert Osteen was the manager. It closed January 11th, 1980. The 26th theater to open in Anderson was the second drive-in, the Highway 29 drive-in. Of course, it was located on Highway 29. It opened August 2nd, 1948 at 7.30 p.m. Their slogan was, enjoy movies in the open. It also was just a movie theater, running mostly repeat movies. 
It closed December the 31st, 1973. The 27th theater to open in Allison was another drive-in, the Fox Drive-In. It was located on the Belden Highway. The ad says, open tonight, Anderson's newest drive-in theater with the first-run movie, The Way of the Gaucho, with Roy Calhoun. It closed January the 29th, 1982. The 28th theater to open in Anderson was the Osteen. It was located at 613 North Main Street. Their grand opening was Wednesday, March the 9th, 1955 at 1 p.m. The only theater built for Cinemascope and Stereoscope sound. Free refreshments to everyone. Percy Osteen, Jr. Manager. This theater closed March the 2nd, 1994. The 29th theater to open in Allison was the Belvedere Cinema located at 3130 North Main Street. It opened Wednesday, August 6, 1969, with the movie The April Fools with Jack Lemmon. This was Anderson's first mini-theater with only 200 seats. P.C. Osteen, Jr., manager. Closed July the 16th, 1994. The 30th theater to open in Anderson was the Mall Theater. It is located at 3129 North Main Street in the Anderson Mall. The gala opening was May the 12th, 1972 at 7 p.m. with The Hospital, starring George C. Scott. This theater is still in operation, but under new management. The 31st theater to open in Anderson was the reopening of Highway 29. It was sold to Clyde Bow. Clyde changed the name to the Viking Drive-In and opened it April the 19th, 1974 with the movie Billy Jack. It ran until May the 16th, 1987. The 32nd theater to open in Anderson was Osteen II. It was located at 101 West Greenville Street. The building joined Osteen I. It opened March the 19th, 1976, with the movie Sherlock Holmes' Smarter Brother. It closed March the 2nd, 1994. The 33rd theater to open in Anderson was the Marketplace Cinema, located in the Marketplace Shopping Center. It opened on Thursday, June the 3rd, 1976, with the movie Old to Billy Joe. This was a Fairlane Ditchfield Theater. It opened with four screens. Now it has six. There was one more I should mention because someone may have heard about it. I would not call it a theater. I would call it a hole in the wall. It was a girly show called The Peekaboo. The 34th and last theater to open in Anderson was the Village Twin. It was located in the Watson Village Shopping Center here. Yeah. It was owned by the Boat Theaters Incorporated. It had two screens. Their grand opening was Friday, July the 16th, 1976 with Gator, starring Burt Reynolds on one screen and Bugs Bunny Superstar on the other. December the 26th, 1986, the Litchfield Theaters had taken over the two screens at the Anderson Mall, the four screens at the Watson Village, and were also operating the six screens in their location. As of today, they have sold to the United Artists chain. United Artists is operating the two screens at the mall the six screens at their location and at the, at the cinema. But the four screens of the Watson Village is being operated by Jeff Snead. We have already shown you the projectors that was used uh, in solid days, back before the talking pictures. 
And now we'll show you the projectors that are used today in 1994. These are the projectors that are being used in the Watson Village Shopping Center, uh, operated by Jeff Snead. <laughs> Thank you. 